Hey y'all, it's me, Nisi Lynn. Uh, this is February the 12th. Happy birthday, Kimmy James. My big girl is six years old today, my little bitty girl. I can't believe she's six already. I called and talked to her this morning. I thought they were gonna cancel school today uh, for her too, but they just did a late start. So she will get to do her Valentine birthday star student party today. So that will be nice. She'll get to do a little bit of her festivities today. So she was super excited to get to go do her thing. So that is really great. This is floss tube number 59. Um, if you're new here or you don't know what floss tube is, this is a channel about needlework and sewing and just what's going on in my life. But so if that's not your thing, this probably ain't your thing, just so as you know. <sighs> Um, we have had really cold weather here, or really cold for us. It's been below freezing, um, all last night, all day yesterday, and during the night. So that's, like, crazy for us. It doesn't usually happen like that. We had that horrible wreck up in Fort Worth. There was a bad one in Dallas. Um, the one in Fort Worth, uh, just praying for all those families. It was a mile and a half long six fatalities, I think 130 cars involved and 60, like 65 people injured. So it was just horrific, but it was raining, drizzling like here. And so um, the roads looked like they were just wet, but then the ground temperature was so cold that it was hit, freezing when it was hitting the ground. And um, I think they were coming up over a rise. And then as one had slid and the other one had slid, they were coming up over the this top of this hill and they couldn't see, like they couldn't see far enough ahead to see that the others weren't moving. And of course, people are trying not to hit their brakes so you don't even see brake lights. And you know, you just, it's just a horrible, horrible thing. So that was terrible here yesterday and still today, they're still working on the cleanup of it to try to uh, get everything cleared and get everything investigated and uh, try to turn this light a little bit more and all that. So um, we're just not, I know y'all have snow plows and things. They had put out sand and stuff on the road around here, but we're just not geared uh, for this kind of weather. We're just not. Um, We've had all the little, I need to go out and fill up my bird feeders. Um, when I get done this morning, I was getting ready and I saw, y'all know how crazy I am. I saw something out on the patio, I mean, up past the pool. And I thought, what is that? And it was like, like kind of going under one of the big planters and I was getting dressed. So I like had on my bed jacket and nothing, like our necky, except for the bed jacket, right? I'm like, what is that? And I realized it's something tiny, like a live. And so I go to the door and it is a tiny little bird. And so of course I go running out there necky with nothing on but my bed jacket to try to save it. And it's a tiny little uh, metal lark, you know, with a bright yellow chest. And he has his feathers, but he's young. He's very small. And I guess because it's been so unseasonably warm here, maybe they, I don't know if they hatch them young. I don't remember ever seeing them hatch in the winter before, but maybe they do and I've just never noticed. But he was so cold that when I walked out there um, and bent down and started talking to him, he just hopped right up in my hands. And so I knew that was a terrible sign. So I've got him over there. I brought in my antique bird cage and I've wrapped little towels, you know, like a little around him like this to try to keep his little body heat in, um, not tight, but just kind of, you know, you should just kind of encircle them and give them some space and I put some water in there for if he gets to feeling like it to go get it, but he's not looking good. And so I know he's probably not gonna make it. So he probably just came in here to get warm and die. And when he does later, I'll cry like a baby. And that's probably letting me know that I'm still not ready for another pet because I can't deal with it. So, but bless his heart. So if you see anything outside, put out some bird feed, be sure there's not any strays wandering up. If you do put out some towels, put out something because it is 
It's awful right now. And I know y'all up north of us have had just been blasted for weeks now. And I cannot, I can't imagine all the poor little things that are trying to survive in this. Like I said, down here, they're just not, they're not used to it. We're not used to it down here. And nobody is geared up for this kind of ridiculousness. And they're saying if it doesn't get above freezing today, that it probably won't get above freezing until like, after Thursday so and we may get like three to six inches of snow mm -hmm. yeah so not my thing not my thing but I do have we have a lot of questions and comments this week um, after last week's video uh, Kathy is looking for Brenda Gervais mice in the sewing room I don't know and I was gonna go look Kathy and I forgot she has country stitches online. Go look in there and see if she has it. Uh, Brenda Gervais, Mice in the Sewing Room. If not, if any of y'all know if your LNS has it, um, holler because Kathy is looking for Mice in the Sewing Room. Denise said she wanted to know about when I met James Williams and slapped him. He's the only person I've ever slapped in my entire life, but he was so obnoxious. He was so obnoxious. But um, he was working with my friend's boyfriend. And my friend had gone home to Iowa. And I was supposed to be going home. I was supposed to be going by her home and checking on her animals and things and stuff. And letting them out. Make sure he had food and all this. And um, her boyfriend was also. So, you know, there was two of us. So he was getting, you know, to get out twice as much and all this. So, when I went by, James Williams and Terry were there. And he was very, I mean, he was very handsome. I mean, great mustache. You know, the red mullet. I mean, everybody had a mullet at that time. Um, great lips, great mouth, you know, 6'4". Uh, Huge shoulders, narrow butt. I mean, you know, just all the things. All the things you look for. Um, except for terribly arrogant and rude. Um, and just rude. I mean, the rude comments. The rude, I mean, just constant. Nah, 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 nah. And I thought, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? So I'm taking care of the dog and I'm getting ready to go. And Terry says, um, hey, let's go. Another friend there's Barry had built a house. And said, hey, I'm going to go out and check on Barry in the new house. You want to go? And I'm like, uh, And he goes, oh, come on. And so, um, we got out there and walk in the door. And he just throws his arm around me and goes, hey, I want to introduce you to my wife. And I'm like. Seriously? And it was just downhill to Denver from there all night. He insulted, I mean, he just had, not, I don't know it was insult, just picked. I shouldn't say insult, I guess, just picked. Picked, 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 picked. Everything I had on. My shoes, my jeans with holes in them, my shoes, my, you know, everything. Just pick, 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 pick. And, um, Till finally, I don't remember what the final comment was, but I just had enough. And it was raining. We'd got back to to Lisa's house and it was raining. And I was just like, you are the most arrogant, rude human I have ever met in my life. And just slapped him and left. Get in my car and he comes out and, and is tapping on the window in the rain. He has this yellow slicker on long slicker, like a duster slicker. Um, and it's tapping on the window and I rolled the window down and he's like, um, hey, I'll see you around sometime. And I said, not if I see you first. And I roll up the window and I drive away. And I'm like, dear God in heaven, are you kidding me? And he had just moved up here. He hadn't lived here before. And I didn't know there was a lot of backstory to this. The guys that he worked with had been, I had been gone, and the guys that we worked with had been telling him about me, and 
then pretended that it was another girl. Anyway, it was a whole big back story and guys are terrible and all. And so then he just kept calling and calling and calling and um, he's nothing if not persistent, I will say that. Until finally, um, one of my friends said, just go out with him and be as noxious as he is and then you know he'll never call you again. And so I thought, okay, I can make that work. I can do that. So um, he said, we can go anywhere you want, do anything you want. So I told him I wanted to go to Las Galinas and show him the horses up there. And um, just, I mean, I tried to think of everything that that he would like to do, not like to do, and um, it didn't work. He called again, and she said, okay, you're gonna have to up your game. And I mean, I dressed like total punked out. I had on um, like a virgin dress. It was like white with this big skirt, and it was strapless, and I had on lace leggings and these black cut-up boots and all, and um, because, of course, he was like total, you know, Total cowboy, and so I thought, okay, this will be, this will break it, you know, this break right here. Didn't, and she's like, you just didn't, you're gonna have to up your game. So I knew he, had, so he kept calling, so I said, okay, I'll go one more time. So I knew he hated Sonic, and hated, and he had men, mentioned hated kid shows. So he said, um, so I said, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go out. So I said, I wanna eat at Sonic, and I wanna go see the Great Mouse Detective. And he was like, okay, and I'm like, oh no. And we went and he was fine the whole time. And so it has been rocky and horrible off and on ever since because we are both um, too hard headed for our own good and too stupid for our own good. And so, um, but yes, he's the only person I've ever slapped in my entire life. But he did look absolutely incredibly handsome in that yellow slicker with his red hair and um, his red mustache and that yellow duster slicker, which if you don't know what a duster is, it's a long coat like you wear and it's split up the back so when you're on a horse, you can undo the snap and it'll go down and cover your legs, okay? So he's 6'4", so you can imagine this and with his broad shoulders, that slicker just fell. It looked fabulous on him, absolutely fabulous on him. And so here we sit still today one of us still trying to outlast the other one, I guess, is where we're headed. Both so hard-headed. Still fussing and fighting and trying to kill each other, I guess, or outlast, keep from, out, keep from dying before the other one. So one of us can say we won, and I think that's kind of how it goes with us. But it's, I mean, it's worked. Um, we were, we are, I don't know if I've ever told y'all this, we're married, divorced, and remarried. We were divorced for two years, I guess, two and a half years. So, um, we are, I tell people I'm a slow learner. I'm a slow learner. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> but, you know, there it is. Here we sit still. And we got remarried on the same day because that makes it easier. You know, we just use the same anniversary and we just tend to not, we just discount those years like they never happened. We just pretend like they never happened. So that's just easiest for us to, that's what we do. So we don't not, we don't not count them or I don't know. It's just easier for us. So anyway, that's the story of the, of the slap and the yellow slicker. So for what it's worth, um, Sherry said, which I did not even know this, that some of the fancy threads that people use that are super fancy, that they have to be ironed off the spool because they come on a spool and they're like tight. And there's even like, they have a special iron just for their threads and things. I had no idea because we were talking about if you decide to debobinate your threads. I don't mind using mine off the bobbin, but we were talking about if people want to take them all off their bobbin and put them on thread drops, that they'll be, you know, like kinked up. If, you, if they've been like that. So, but that there are threads that you have to do that, some fancy ones, so I had no clue. And Jerilyn was talking about cutting her hair because she has all these cowlicks. I don't wanna hear it, Jerilyn. I had, I thought CJ's hair is full of cowlicks. 
I mean, full of calyx. And my cousin would cut his hair. She was she a hairdresser and she'd be cutting his hair. And of course, you know, he was like, he's all over the place always, never could sit still. And it was just, cutting his hair was always an adventure. And I said something one day and I said, I guess it would be easier if he didn't have all those calyx. I don't know where he got them from. And she said, what? And I said, I said, I don't know where he got all those calyx from. It'd probably be easier to cut if he didn't have them. She said, you don't know where he got them? And I said, no, I don't know where he got them. And she goes, girl, he got them from you. Your head is a wreck. And I was like, what? What? And you know, if you, like a girl, I guess you don't ever know because you don't usually wear short hair. And she said, girl, you have a calyx right here. You have a double crown right here. It's like two allies on the back of your head. You got a reverse hairline. You got a little thing wicked up over here. And she started naming off these things. And I was like, what? I had no clue. I had no clue that my head was such a wreck. And I didn't know who to blame it on. My poor baby's head on. And it was me. It was me. So, Geraldine, I guess we'll have to start a club of people with all the cow licks. And Lori, we're talking about hair, talked to, nicked her husband's ear when she was young and they were didn't have much money and she would cut his and the boy's hair with the clippers and she nicked his ear and she said she's still hearing about it to this day, which I can imagine because one time we were poor and I didn't have any clippers. Uh, we hadn't been married very long and I tried to cut James Williams' hair with just some scissors and not hair scissors, okay? And not even good fabric. I mean, they were just the scissors we had in the house. And it looked like I'd cut his hair with a butcher knife. It looked so bad. But it is much better with clippers. But yes, if I'd have cut his ear, I'd have never quit hearing about it. That ain't no joke. It would, it would have been the end of the end. Oh, and Michelle uh, Sosu. Suso. I said it backwards. I knew I would. Suso. Michelle says, Tis the season and home for the holidays uh, are both available at Hobby House Needleworks. So if y'all are looking for those, Hobby House Needleworks had both of those. And then um, Angela and Janet said Home for the Holidays is now available at 123 Stitch. So um, check for those there. Um, I was shocked because I, when I looked, I thought that 123 was the only place I knew that had had it at one time and they were out of it and Jerry Lynn had had it and she was out of it. So, but they said those two places have it now. Oh, and Cindy was kind enough to send me about the um, the Christmas book from Blackbird. And I said I did not know how to say J-O-Y-E-U-X. I had no idea. And so she said, I'll try to send you, I tried to send you a phonetic spelling of it, but I couldn't. But she said, Google it. I don't know why I didn't ever think to Google a pronunciation. Why did I never think of that? But it is like, Joyeux, Joyeux Noel. So thank you, Cindy, for that because... Why did I never think to Google that instead of just sitting there going, I have no idea how to say this word. But so are you, if I said it right, so are you, Noel. But it is, um, sounds beautiful. So thank you, Cindy. And now I hope I will remember that in future, I can Google pronunciations also. Duh. Debbie Leslie and Deborah from Maryland, who is also her friend, assured me that P. Buckley Moss is a woman. Her name is Pat. Why I thought she was a man, I cannot know. I have loved her beautiful, precious art because it is beautiful and so precious. Those little Amish people, I assume they're Amish. We have Mennonites here, but they don't usually dress in black. So I'm assuming they're Amish people. Um, and they're, it's precious. Why did I think she was a man, unless because Buckley, it's P. Buckley, and I thought like Buckley might be a guy. I don't know. But, Deborah, if you will please tell her that I am so sorry. I am appalled at myself. But all my life, I for some reason thought that P. Buckley Moss was a man. For heaven's sake. So, much apologies. Um, I can't believe that. And uh, Jacqueline and Julie were kind enough to let me know that I did use the alphabet for Remember Me, which I took, um, I took that one out of here, but my uh, Tis the Season piece that has Remember Me at the bottom is out of, I used the alphabet out of this. 
It's in Sweet Land of Liberty. I don't know if this has ever been released separately or not, but it's this America right here. And then I just made up the B because all you need are R's and E's and a B. Spell remember me. So I just made up the B. So that's the alphabet I used right there is out of Sweet Land of Liberty. And this one, which the name of is, um, they told me, American Eagle. There's a better picture of it. American Eagle is the name of it, which I need to stitch because it is so beautiful, but I haven't yet, so. But that's where the alphabet I used for Remember Me came from. So uh, thank you. Y'all are my hive mind, y'all know, because good grief. And I'm laughing at Jackie because you are committed. You are committed. She went out in six degree weather with her friend to go to their LNS because they were having a sale. That is committed. That is real commitment. If you're gonna go out in six degrees, I would be hard pressed to run out of this house if it was burning, if it was six degrees outside. I might decide just to stay inside and just burn and stay warm. I don't even know because holy smoke, six degrees? I guess y'all are used to that, but that, the thought of six degrees to me is just like, mm -mm, no. I can't even believe you can survive in six degrees. And um, this is good to know, good to know. Michelle said they use Gooby Gone to get a uh, real thick black paint and it was outdoor paint like they used on the uh, basketball pole to hold the basketball goal up to get that kind of paint off of her son and it took it right off. So I wish that had been around whenever um, we got that paint Aunt Lori and I had it all over ourselves. And it was a real minty, green and it want, had us paint a um like a little three seat settee that she had outside and the seat went together like a little spider web kind of thing and then the back did the same thing like that and there were three little seats connected together and uh, she had it out under her pecan tree and amy was something else and she had us over there and paint that she was always she was always super fun one time, um, one time, Laurie and I were gonna go to town with her. And now Laurie knew how to drive. Um, her daddy, you know, she drove in the pasture and stuff. And for some reason, she was never bothered by things like that. And I was always horrified of driving. But we're driving to town, and Amy says, in which she would she would curse. Um, oh, curse word, curse word. The pedal stuck and she lets go of the steering wheel of her big old giant green car, some kind of big giant green 70s model with two a bench seat in the front and a bench seat in the back and bends down in the floorboard and is jerking on the pedal. And Laurie, and I mean, we're going to town and it goes like this from, from Kirkland to Fairfield, the hills go like this. And uh, Laurie reaches over and grabs the steering wheel and she's, we're looking at each other like, oh my God. And you know, she's holding the steering wheel, thank you Jesus. And Amy gets the pedal and stuff and just sits back up and goes to drive in and everything like nothing ever happened. But um, she had polio when she was a kid and their doctor told her that if she would take their, you know, the old iron, the cast iron iron she used to use and lift it up with her arm and her leg that she could hurt, that she would be all right and she would get around. And she did, and she went on into her life and made a nurse and worked all her life and everything. And it um, bothered her some as she got really old, but she lived by herself. She never married. The man she wanted to marry married somebody else, and that was, that was it. And I know even it, when we were kids that other of the older men in town asked her to marry, marry them, and she said, no, the man I wanted to marry married somebody else. And that was it. She lived by herself with her little old dog, Chippy. And um, he was like one of those little rat terriers. <laughs> and she sat in her house and smoked and did um, kind of craft things, sewed and stuff all the time. And just did whatever she wanted. And never thought of another thing about it, I guess. She retired from the state school out there. And uh, she was always so... Um, she was always so funny and fun though. She just did whatever she wanted and didn't worry a thing about it. So 
Yeah, but I wish we'd have known about the Goofy Goner that it had been invented when we had to use that gasoline all over us to get that paint off. And uh, Dottie, who is Stitching Scotty on YouTube, says Pandas Crossing in Malden, South Carolina, has the paper mache boxes. And she says hers, she got the one, and she says it's about four by six inches. She says it's about the size of the palm of her hand for the candy cane, um, is it candy cane wishes? What's that the name of it? Well, heck. Candy cane wishes. Yeah, Ellen was looking for it. And uh, she said she got hers there at Panda's Crossing in Malden, South Carolina. She says they don't have it online that you'll have to call them. But that that's where she got hers. And um, Arlene got her first vaccine this week. Yes, that makes me so super happy when y'all let me know y'all got those. Patty Penn got hers this week also. And um, she has been married nearly 39 years in a week or so. So congratulations, Patty Penn. That is something. Oh, and Rebecca said Silver Needle has home for the holidays. So there are several places that have it. Um, it's so funny that we think we can't find it anywhere, but there are, um, y'all are always great about, if it's out there, y'all know where it can be found. So Silver Needle also has home for the holidays. So if you wanna get the stockings and the, um, it has the ABCD stockings and um, Nikki is stitching those right now, Nikki Harmon. And they are looking so beautiful. And it has the um, Tis the Season pattern that was right over here last week in it. Um, Jennifer asked about this guy here, the Find Joy little snowman pattern. He's my pattern. He's on the blog. Um, I know it's in last week's drop down description. I'll try to remember to put it in this week's drop down description. But he's in there. But he's my little pattern. Um, thank you for liking him. I appreciate that. I had a lot of fun with him. Um, and Jessa, which I don't know why I didn't realize this, Jessa. Thank you for making me realize people don't do what they're supposed to. She said they have put two lines in at the pharmacy. And people for testing and stuff are supposed to get in one line. And people for pickup prescription are supposed to get in the other line. And people still get in the wrong line. So, I don't know why I didn't think about that, Jessa. That no matter what you do, people still get in the wrong line and muddy up the water. So, I don't know why I didn't realize that. No matter what you do, people are not going to listen and pay attention, and then it's going to be a hot mess. And then right here, last one, Lynn asked, is that a little uh, sheep wearing a pumpkin costume? And Lynn, yes, it is. And this is in Cross-Eyed Cricket number 200. It's called Fallen Leaves. And it is a little sheep wearing the cutest little pumpkin costume you have ever seen in your life. And it has the little mitten in there also. And then this band here, which would make the cutest little drum you ever saw in your life. Wouldn't that make a cute little drum? So this is Cricut Collection number 200, Fallen Leaves. So I think, I think that is all our questions and comments. I'm trying to get through all the vlog ones. Um, I will get through them all. Y'all be patient with me. Thank you for, y'all always are patient with me. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, now, Happy Mail. I did get some Happy Mail this week. Um, this is from my friend Sarah. If you don't have a friend like Sarah, send you fabulous cards. Sends me this card and it says, Hope your Valentine's Day does too. And this is what I want to say to so many people. And Sarah is always good about getting her words right. Girl, I miss your face. I hope you can feel the big hug in this card and can't wait until I can make it a real one. Love you, Sari. I nearly cried because this is the thing. I miss everybody's face. And I want to hug them and kiss them. This is the hard thing. I miss everybody's face. And I miss hugging them and s tangibly seeing that they are okay with my hands. Um, a friend posted, um, hey, I'm behind on some projects. I don't know what's going on. Just check on everybody, you know, because I don't know what's going on with me. But I just, uh, and I'm like, you know what, you know what's going on with you? It's the stress. And it. 
even if you have food and you're safe and you're well, it's the stress of knowing that so many other people aren't. It really weighs on you. <clears throat> and we've been having this for a year now and it's a lot. So it's, it's so stressful. I can't imagine the stress of being um, food deprived or um, being, you know, there are people who live in food deserts and there are things that, you know, that just don't have food and all these things. That is next level. And then you have the stress of just knowing that that's going on with so many people. It's a lot. So just y'all be nice to yourself and because it's a lot. It's a lot. It, it's a lot. So be nice to yourself because it's a lot. It's a lot right now. I'm just going to leave that there. I got this beautiful card from Michelle and she sent one to um, Ari and Kimi here. She got these cards for them and she sent me this beautiful note in here. I got this beautiful note from her and these cards for Kimi and Aria. So they will be, um, I may see if Kimi can come do a video tomorrow. I'm not sure what Mike and them will do. They did decide to put her video off, but her party off till next week. So um, if the driving conditions are okay, I will run these by to them tomorrow. They'll probably come over here to get out a little bit. Um, maybe this afternoon, depending on how many calls their mama has or what, because she's been having so many calls and stuff and been so busy. So it depends on the driving conditions, but I will get those to them. So thank you, Michelle. And thank you for your sweet words in the note. And then I got some more fun stuff from Frankie. Frankie sent me this fun, fun thing of thread. And I did not have this, and I'm gonna to try to hold these up. So, these are what came in here. Try to find a white piece to hold it up against. All white, there we go. She sent me some more thread she's been doing. This is Little Red Riding Hood in the front, and I will show you, um, I stitch, I've been stitching with it before, but I didn't put it with the project because I wanted to be sure y'all saw it. Love Letters is this variegated, like kind of an ecru. Help Me Rhonda is this beautiful kind of aqua tealy color, and then another Harvest Moon because she knew I was over the moon for Harvest Moon. So thank you, Frankie, at a Wicked Stepmother. She's a Wicked Stepmother on Etsy. And y'all know I have been loving, I love loving her threads. So I have been having so much fun stitching with them. Y'all are fixing to see what I stitch with them. I've been stitching with them all week. Having so much fun. But with the weather being yucky, I did get a decent amount of stitching done this week. Hallelujah and amen. I guess I'll show this one first because it was what I stitched last night. James Williams went to bed a little bit before me. And so this is a little snippet of Little Red Riding Hood. I'm holding it upside down. This is Be Mine Valentine by Lizzie Kate. And I'm going to try to get it where you can see the variegation in the red. I hope it shows up. But I stitched a bigger piece with it. But it is so cute. And this pattern, like I said, I don't know if they have it on one, two, three or not. But it has a cute border around it. And y'all know I just use my scraps. I keep pieces about this size and a little bigger scraps. And I just use them for smalls. Um, because I don't have any, like that's the only little bowl filler. The love one I stitched was just kind of collapsed down in there. And I don't usually have this piled up like this. But... I did kind of want to pile it in for the Valentine's. The last couple days for Valentine's. Um, that is a old stitch I stitched for good old girl. If you saw the vlog yesterday, you saw it. I know a lot of people don't have time for the vlog, but it's out of a Leisure Arts magazine, probably in 93. I gave it to her Christmas in 93. So it would have probably been 92 or 93 in the Leisure Arts magazine. So, And then I just laid the stockings over there. And then these are all older stitches, real ancient stitches. So, and then those, that's the love. I think it's needle bling. And when y'all see y'all had it kitted up, it's a cute, fast little stitch. And Vonna does a great tutorial on doing these package. I think she calls it a package finish. 
but she does a great tutorial on it. I wish I had, um, it gives, a, gives the instructions with it in the book in the, cause it was in one of the just cross stitch magazines. I wish I had known about the tutorial, but I didn't know about YouTube then. Um, when I did it, because you know, Vanna's instructions are always very thorough and she shows you, you know, you can see and you can stop it and then kind of try to get to where she's at and then restart it. So, um, if you're ever trying to do anything, it's well worth it to see if Vanna has a tutorial on it. <laughs> and watch it first because it helps so much because she's very thorough and she has a she's very good at getting the camera where you can see what she's doing I'm just telling you and she does do she does an ornament I think on it but it's the same thing but I think she calls it a package finish or something like that but anyway she does a good tutorial on it so and that's what that one is but anyway that is the first whip this week so it just has a little bit on it james williams went to bed a little bit before me last night and i had finished up something and i thought i'm just going to grab the southern stitch on that so then i worked on may health and peace by my lady's needle um like i said i know the attic has this and the stitch niche has this so the attic in mesa arizona and the stitch niche in arlington both had this pattern um it's by my lady's needle uh gloria moore just killed it with this thing. It is, the the picture is beautiful. I knew I wanted to stitch it when I got the email from my LNS saying that they were gonna do a stitch along. And here are the threads there. I knew I wanted to stitch it. And then when you get there and you see the threads in, in real life, it is so much prettier. And I'm gonna, cause this thing's huge. It's a big girl. And I kind of got this folded under, but you can see the little flower down there. But so this week I got the deer done. No, last week I did the deer. I got the tree done, the tree and the key. So the tree and the key. And I know it's, it, but it, in the pattern it's this way. It has some, which I mean, look, trees do that. One side will change before the other. So it it's hard to see, but it has little light colored leaves. And then on one side it has the orangey leaves and then the green leaves around the outside. And it is just so pretty with the key. And then it has uh, the house. And then you start a little, it has a little building. And then you start all this over here. This week I will probably try to do this band across here. Probably. That is going to be, that's one of my things to work when you have to kind of go up and down up and down diagonals I told y'all diagonals are hard for me for some reason but if um, this like I said only has the only over ones are these I think there's four stick stitches right here you could easily do them whole stitches not over one over two and so if you want to do a big sampler on Ada you could easily do this guy because all the wording is over two so you could easily do this on Ada and it would be gorgeous if you're looking for a sampler, a big sampler you can do on Ada. And it is a reproduction. Um, it is two details. She, I don't have the picture over here. I didn't bring it, but of course she puts the original, the picture of the original in there and it is gorgeous. It is beautiful. And I have enjoyed stitching on it. Um, I got the kit with the, 28 count linen and the DMC from my LNS, the Stitch Niche in Arlington. And they offered it in different counts of fabric. And they also offered a silk conversion for it. You could do silk or the DMC and you could do whatever count of fabric. So I have really enjoyed it so much. So, so much. So, and one of y'all, and now I have to remember who, told me that y'all are stitching it over one the whole thing. I can't imagine. It's gonna be beautiful as all get out, but holy smokes, that is a lot of over one. Cause that's a lot of stitching. I don't remember what the stitch count is on it, but it's immense. It's immense. I worked on Peace on Earth and I was pleased. I was really pleased with my progress on it this week. 
Um, it's, I've told you it's hard on me because it's all diagonals. But it is so pretty. Y'all, this is so pretty. And after I remembered why I put it down because it's the diagonals are so hard on me. And I don't know why my brain don't like to work that way. Um, and I said it was the same thing about working on a, about reading a clock. And then um, when y'all sent me that that is uh, to do with ADHD. And we have always wondered because the, my dad has it real bad. My dad's nickname was Jitter when he was in school. And uh, CJ, of course, when we took him to the doctor and we took him to all these specialists, he said he's like one of the worst cases I've ever seen in my life. But with girls, you know, it's different. I could be still, but I would just finish my paper and turn it in, and then I would just want to be left alone. I would just read or draw or whatever, and I just wanted to be left. I just wanted people to leave me alone. And when they would ask me the question, I could answer it every time I knew the answer. But it just didn't, eh, you know. But I would always prefer to be doing what I wanted to be doing as to what anybody else was doing. So I would just hurry up finish my paper, turn it in, usually got a hundred, and then just wanted to be left alone. Just don't bother me, you know, after that. So I wonder if, you know, if that, because it works like that, something about that my brain does not, my brain don't go that way. I don't know why. But this is the most gorgeous thing with these colors. And this is, and I don't know why they're so, I must have had them crinkled up, kind of wrapped around each other or something in the, when I had them put up. There you go, you can see all the colors there. We well, can't see the light one very good, but there's a lighter green on the back, which ain't wanting to show itself. There we go. And it is just so pretty. So, I got the rest of this guy done. He was kind of not finished up up here. Uh, we went up here and finished up this, and then I started down this way. And then I came over, jumped over, because I had a little bit of green, this color green left, so I jumped over and put a little bit of it over here. So I was super pleased with um, how much progress I made on this guy. It is just the prettiest thing. I think this is sheep straw, maybe 30 or 32 count sheep straw by r, &R. It is beautiful. The, the threads are beautiful. The design is beautiful. I cannot wait to finish it. And I never thought about it, and I, it's probably too big for me to hold them both together. But when I was stitching on it this week, this always think peace on earth for some reason. I always think of peace on earth this Christmas. I don't know why. I think because of the song, um, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. That's really too fast for that. But anyway, you know that song? Anyway. But I think... I think I like these together. I never thought about putting these somewhere together, but the piece and the piece and the kind of the, the kind of the colors, I think I will like them on the same wall together. So um, then I got really excited about that. So woohoo. Then you'll know I had set down my wild hedgerow house because I could not decide because I cannot do that little that little switch in the stitches. That little confetti stitching is not my bag. It makes for a beautiful design. And y'all knew I said I was gonna change up a lot of the colors because this is um, kind of palish for me. But like these flowers have each one of these, each one of these petals has three colors in it. Each one of these green petals has three colors in it. So it has like three or four stitches of three colors. And y'all ain't about that life. I am not about that life. That ain't me. So I just kind of set it down. Um, I couldn't decide what to do. Uh, Darlie turned me on to this. Um, she has beautiful quilt and beautiful stitching. So if, um, Darlie's stuff is just gorgeous. But I just kind of set it aside because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Because after I got to looking at it, I knew I could not. I could not do those little one, one, one stitches would make me bite my tongue off. So I got, and I thought I would try it. I did, the red is, which I didn't grab, is a variegated DMC. And then the blue edge is Freedom, which I love. So, and then I've got these variegated, 
green and purpley pinky color, which were very similar to the picture of DMC. And I just had them in my stash. And I thought, let's give this a go. And I did a little bit of the back stitch to see if I was gonna like it. I think I may have to darken up the back stitch a little bit, maybe not. But I was super happy. Woohoo! And so I think I'm gonna be able to pull it back out and start working on it again because this is gonna work for me. This is gonna work for me. This is so this is one thread, just using the variegated thread of the pink, pinky purple color, and one variegated thread of using that green. So then I just backstitched with a solid. So that way there was no of that 9,000 times of, you know, switching over the fabric, uh, switching over the thread, switching over the thread, switching over the thread. I'm not about that life, y'all. Um, I find that very tedious and very aggravated, and I don't like that. So I think that is going to work for me, and now I'm so excited. I'm so happy that I figured out what I'm going to do. I had done about half that flower and I was just like, I don't know if this is going to work, but from far off and up close, I'm fine with that. I am absolutely fine with that. There are like one, two, like three or four of these down the side of these. I guess they're asters, I would guess, if I had to guess. One, two, there are four. So there's one, two, three, four of these down the side. Of this thing and I'm very content with how that turned out so I think we can soldier on forward because I do love that this is toast by be stitch me it is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so I do love that and I love it on here. And so I think all that's gonna work for me. So I just, all my whips this week were making me happy. I was having all the happiness with my whips this week. So, woohoo! I was loving that. Absolutely loving it. So yeah, that was good times. Good times with the whips. And then um, I was working on In Full Glory by Blackbird. And y'all know I was changing. Where's this one? Now I've got a tangly mess over here. I was uh, changing up the threads because this one here, um, and one of y'all was sweet enough to say, yes, I'm a Bostonian, and yes, that does look like a Boston house. Um, I display these in the summer. And to me, this looked like a Boston house, which always makes me think kind of, I don't know why, of it being cooler and more wintry, I don't know why, the dark brick and all. And so I wanted mine because I display them in the summer. That's when I leave my patriotic stitches out all summer. And so I wanted mine to be kind of summery and um, look more like a house down here. So this is In Full Glory by Blackbird. And I used, I've got Ruby Slippers, Toasted Barley, and blacksmith blue and then just a dmc 3031 or my others and then all these others are my wicked stepmother colors my frankie colors by wicked stepmother and i thought this is my first project to just pull these out and use them and i was excited flesh of my flesh harvest moon poison red berries old gray mare and Holly Jolly Christmas. And I thought that kind of looked like, for me, a kind of more uh, summery, kind of what I would display in the summer. And I wanted the only true red to be on my flag, the true red and the true blue to be on my flag. So here we are, and y'all, I love it. I am so happy with it. This is the Harvest Moon. The house is the Harvest Moon by Wicked Stepmother. I'm loving it. This is the Poison Red Berries. This is the Old Gray Mare. And this is the Holly Jolly Christmas. And then the Off-White on the trims. 
and then here is the flesh of my flesh. And I am the roof and the door is just the toasted barley. Um, I think it's, is it gassed? Gas, gassed? Yeah. But I love it. And you can see the good variegation I got in it. I mean, I was so pleased that all my variegation showed up so good. I was super excited. Super, super excited. And then this is, of course, the inauguration date. I said I wanted to start um, each inauguration putting, you know, trying to do a commemorative piece. The only true red and blue that should just, I wanted it to kind of show out is the flag. And then the dark, the main dark thing is the eagle. And then I have my initials. I crammed them in over here. And... Of course, the, the year I didn't need because it's already up here. So I just kind of wiggled my little initials in right there. So this guy, I just loved. When he was finished, I'm so excited. I don't know. Um, I can't decide how I'm going to finish him. If I'm going to put him in a little, I really think I'm just going to put him in a frame. I thought at first I was going to make him just in a little pillow. But I love him so much. I may just, I think I may put him in a little frame or a little stand up to go on an easel. He's just fabulous. And I don't know if In Full Glory was ever, um, I do know, look, let me, I do know that In Full Glory was re released as a reward of merit pin key. We, um, it was one of the shares a couple weeks ago, maybe last week or so, week before last. So you can, if you can't find Sweet Land of Liberty, it was one of the pin keeps. So it is a standalone pattern somewhere, if you can find it somewhere. So that one I was super pleased with. It's my um, inauguration day stitch. So that made me so happy to have it finished and get it ready to display this summertime. Then I had two more finishes. And I went and dug in my Frank threads and my Wicked Stepmother threads and got them out. And I say Frankie, and I've got to quit saying that because Frankie and Rhonda both work on these. And um, it's Frankie and her daughter-in-law make the threads. And this one is Love. And it's F164 Love. I don't know if that makes a difference. It's Love by Lizzie Kate. I thought it was so cute. One of the flip it series and because I'm a goob and I didn't get my design centered very well when I was stitching I must have laid it down and flipped the O when I was working on it so then I didn't get to put my little border at the top and bottom but that's okay because I'm just gonna make it into a little pillow it's fine but these are I used these are so pretty. Paper Roses, Barbie Girl, what's this one? Green Shirt, and I think this one is Violet and Blue. And you can see down there, and there you go, you can see the blue in it much better. And then just some white, black, and um, did I use the DMC 647 gray? Oh, that's on the other side. Okay. Yeah, so those are, I used the, all three of these colors were, I ended up not using that one, so. But I used these, and they are so pretty. I loved them. And they stitched up gorgeous. And this is a leftover piece of toast of the toast Bobby stitch me and I don't know if they the variegation is going to show up very good or not I don't know why the lights going weird all of a sudden the heck is that it's going kind of light and dark from my side I don't know what it's doing but it is you can see it from here it does show up really good. And then I just put my little initials. Here's 2021. 
but 2021 over here and my initials are very very small right over here somewhere lord of mercy no right up here i'm on the wrong side right up here and i just love it it turned out so cute and it worked up quick i was super pleased with it and then i worked on be mine by bent creek and it was really cute but i wanted to change the colors up a little bit and make it more um a little bit more pink and stuff in it not quite so red and red and brown so this is my take on it and it's using the same color palette it's got all my wicked stepmother colors in it except for the gray i used um i think it's dmc 647 for the key and that is Bent Creek Happy Valentine. And the only, I use two threads over everything. The only one thread is the border around is the one thread of white, but this is the little red riding hood. And you can see the color variation in the red. I guess if I turn it that way, maybe it looks a little better from here. It shows up a little better. Like that maybe. But it is so cute. These were such cute little fast stitches. I used up my scraps of um, fabric. I like to save them and use them up for little things like this. That way I don't have to chop up a whole another big piece. And it um, uses up my beautiful pieces of fabric that I have left. That made me so happy too. So um, that is, so my finishes this week were in full glory. Happy Valentine by Bent Creek and Love by Lizzie Kay. Those are my finishes. And then the shares this week, I'm going to finish, I'll finish up Be Mine Valentine too. So this week the shares will be Be Mine Valentine, Happy Valentine's Day, and Love by Lizzie Kay. And so, let's see if I can figure out what words to use. Okay, if you're interested in love, by Lizzie Kate, use the word love. If you're, you, if you're interested in this one, use the word... Well, this is odd. Use the word happy because the name of it's Happy Valentine. So if you're interested in the share Happy Valentine by Bent Creek, use the word happy right there in the fir first word of it. And then if you're you interested in the Lizzie Kate Be My Valentine, use the word Valentine. There you go. Okay. All right, so those are will be our shares this week. And then last week, we had all the shares. So I need to run through those before I forget because I like to do it again. Which when I do that, makes me want to scream when I get off the air and realize I have not done that. That'll be the face that YouTube will pick. Now, here's the thing. Why don't I learn not to make that face? Yeah, that would be the real question, wouldn't it? Why don't I learn to stop making that face? Yeah. So, um, these will be, these are the shares from last week. Uh, Y'all email me, niecylynn at yahoo.com. The first one is um, the His Stocking. And I don't know if you can, my stuffing is all wonky in there, but I just stuffed it in there and I've been putting my notes in there. But it's his, let me see, you can't even, I should, maybe I should take this stuff out of it to, to display, it would have been better today. But anyway, his stocking, and it is um, Holly, Holly Cornish. So email me the Halloween, who's this guy? It's Pat Myers, 
Pat, if you'll email me your address, I'll get it in the mail. And Holly, yours will just be an email, so I need your email. It's a PDF. Um, leaves is this little cutie with a pumpkin sheet and the costume. Is Jeannie Clore. Jeannie. The owl. Here, he is so cute. And he, everything is in there, by the way. Um, and Masso. And Masso is the owl. And then we have the stitch cards. And so y'all just send me your address and I will just stick one in an envelope. Um, like I said, there's, I didn't try to send one to one. That was too much. So the prim stitch cards, there is the little basket, the angel, the little scarecrow man, and the, I guess I call it a Rosa Sharon. I don't know what it is. It says beauty and simplicity. It makes me think of Rosa Sharon. The four people for those are Deborah Klein, Linda Zismoniak, and I hope I didn't butcher your name, Sherry Finnick, and Linda Spost, S-P-O-S-T. So if y'all will email me and get me your addresses, um, it may take a few days, depending on how the weather does here, before I get to the post. So just know that, but um, I will get those in the mail to y'all. Y'all stay in, stay safe, and stay warm. I will uh, try to get this thing uploaded. We'll see how slow the internet is with it being cold um, and everybody being home. I'll go check on my little baby bird over here. Like I said, I know it ain't, it ain't looking good probably because it is, it was probably too cold for too long, but we do have a good bird sanctuary here, but it's over to Ferris, which is way over by 45, over off for 45 from here. Um, we are fortunate to have it. I have taken numerous birds over there over the years, but I would be very hesitant to try to drive over there with the, and cut, go across that many bridges and things with the weather like this. I took a road runner over there a few years back that had knocked his noodle. Um, he was so cute, but I was going to daddy's and he was laying in the middle of the road and I could tell he didn't look like he'd been hit. He was just laying there. And I stopped and got out. And he wasn't dead, but he was just non-responsive. So I picked him up like this, holding him on one arm, driving the Jeep like this. <laughs> and I get to Daddy's. And, um, because I was going over there to see my cousins that had come in from Utah. And, um, I talked to them for a little bit. And I said, hey, I got to get him over here. I called over there and they said, yeah, we're here. Um, Told him what had happened. I said, I think he's just like loopy or something. And um, because he's breathing and his neck's fine, but he's just like sitting here, like just still. And so they said, oh yeah, come on, bring him over there. And they checked him out. They let me stay while they checked him out. And they said, yeah, he just like has a concussion. <laughs> so they, you know, they keep him and uh, rehab him and get him well. And then if they're, you know, where they can, they, you know, turn them back out again. So that made me happy. But I'm taking hummingbirds over there and um, road runners and numerous things over the years that have happened to come into our path and be beyond my skill level. I did not know what to do with a road runner that was just sitting there staring. So, but yeah, so we'll see how the baby bird goes. Y'all stay warm, stay in. And just, um, golly, y'all, stay off the roads if it's nasty like it is here. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Enjoy your stitching.